Here we're going to look at Thorndike's laws and how they apply to operant conditioning. It's possible that you might be asked specific questions on Thorndike's laws, but it's more likely that Thorndike's laws are going to appear in a marked scheme where you would get credit if you mention them and you show how they link to operant conditioning. So let's have a look at those just now. The first thing we need to be aware of is that there are three laws and they are the law of the exercise, the law of effect and the law of readiness. And we're going to look at each of those in turn. We'll start by looking at the law of exercise, which simply says that the more that we carry out and practice the skill, the more likely we are to get better at it. So as you can see here, we've got a pistol shooter who is practicing. She may or may not have hit the target, we can't see, but she's continuing to practice. The more she shoots, the more she's gonna get better. Obviously this would depend upon her getting some feedback and reinforcement as well. But basically the law of exercise tells us that we improve through training and practice. In this video, we can see that the girls have made one or two mistakes there, especially the ones on the left there. When they brought the girl down on the top there, she, she fell over. So that's fine. We're practicing. We're getting things right. And the more we do it correctly, the better we will be. The next law is the law of effect. And this is about having praise from our coach to positively enforce what we've done. So you'll remember from operant conditioning, the, the idea of positive reinforcement strengthens the SR bond. If we carry out the desired response, then the coach sees that and will give us those satisfiers of thumbs up and clapping and smiling. And that's exactly what we want to do because we want, as the coach, we want to ensure that that behavior is repeated. So the law of effect says, if we provide a satisfier when the performer has done the right thing, then they're more likely to carry on doing that. Now, the law of readiness, which is the third one, is about the individuals being physically and mentally ready, prepared to carry out the learning. So Thorndike basically said if, if they're not ready mentally, if they're not ready physically, it's unlikely, very unlikely that learning will take place. And we've also got to make sure that what we're teaching or showing the learners that we want them to acquire is appropriate for them in, in terms of their physique, in terms of their mental capacities. So you can see here the very young girls doing the ballet there. It's unlikely that we're gonna be asking them to do what you can see on the right-hand side with the older girls, the, other, the older ballerinas, because they're not ready yet physically and mentally to do that. And that is what the law of readiness tells us, that learning will only take place, the specific skill, the movement will only take place if the learners are physically and mentally ready for the learning.